Hello, everyone. Good evening. I would like to call to order the Cumberland School Committee meeting, August 10th, 2017. Are these microphones working properly? Okay. Thank you. At 7.13 p.m., and I would like to ask that you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, approval of minutes for regular meeting 7-13-2017, the special meeting 7-31-2017, approval of minutes executive session 7-13-2017, the enrollment report of 8-1-2017, school police report of 7-1-2017, and the residency truancy report of 8-1-2017. Pleasure of the committee? Mr. Denon makes a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. DeMonica. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it, 7-0. Next item on the agenda is the report out of executive session meeting. Report out of executive session meeting tonight on 8-10-2017. There was no vote. Uh, pleasure of the committee, a vote to seal the minutes of executive session. I apologize. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Friedman. We're going to backstep a little bit on, uh, on the third part, the approval of the agenda. I guess that would make sense. Pleasure of the committee. Mr. Hess has a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Denon and Mrs. Goggin. All in favor? Eyes have it. Sorry about that. I'm still on summer vacation time, I guess. All right, skipping ahead is pleasure of the committee for a vote to seal the minutes of executive session that we had this evening. Do I have a motion? Motion, motion by Mr. Denon to seal. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Fiorello and Mrs. Goggin. Friedman. Chairman, there were no votes taken. You didn't say that. Correct, yes. Thank you, Mr. DeMonica. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, everyone. Uh, there are two things on the agenda, but there are actually three things that I'd like to share with you this evening. The first thing that I would like to share is um, a program called um, blessings in a backpack. Mr. Damana and I uh, had the pleasure of meeting Lauren de Leon, who is here this evening with her assistant, uh, and her husband Michael to learn about blessings in a backpack, which what a wonderful name for a program. And just to give a quick overview based on my recollection of our meeting, um, probably a month and a half to two months ago, um, Blessings in a Backpack is a, a program designed to provide food for families who may be living in poverty. As you all know, uh, there are some families um, when they go home um, either for a weekend or even over the course of the summer, um, there is concern that they may not be getting the food that they need to um, nourish their families in a healthy way. So um, I've asked Lauren to come to the school committee this evening to share um, as much information as she can about this program. And just for your information, um, with your support, she will, the goal is to for her to and her husband to raise some money for this program, and the goal would be to start in September of 2018. So would you like to approach the um, podium, please, and just provide a little information <laughs> about this program? Welcome.
Oh, Mrs. Fogel, we. Oh, hold on, we got it. Can you hear me? Thank you. All right. Yes. So my name is Lauren DeLeon. My husband, Michael, and I are, are residents of Cumberland, and we um, are very passionate about food insecurity and children. We came across this national program that aims to provide children who are on the free and reduced lunch programs at public schools in the elementary school system with food over the school year weekends. The idea is that we will help supplement will help supplement their food um, that they receive during the school week and give them something to offer them nourishment over the weekends. The meeting that we had with Superintendent Mitchell a couple of months ago was aiming to see which schools would be best suited for the pilot program and figuring out who the personnel would be to I'm sorry, wait, hold on one second. Your microphone went out. We're going to switch it to one of these wireless units. Sorry about that. So right now we're in just the logistics phase of organizing the program. Um, I have a meeting set up with the food services manager of Cumberland next month to talk about the uh, number of students enrolled in the free and reduced lunch program and to figure out if we could set up a contract with Sodexo, which is the food servicer of Cumberland. And as of right now, we're just seeking the approval of the school committee and school board to go forward with this program. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may, may I, Mitchell. Lauren, can you please share with the committee the um, significance of the backpack, like, the, like one of the uh, intent and in, uh, goals of the program is to provide food in a sort of a private way, if you will. So the, uh, of the utmost importance is the privacy of the students and the families receiving the backpacks so as to minimize any food shaming, which is a new term that's being spread around for uh, children with food insecurity. So my role as the, I guess, organizer is to fundraise, collect food, package it, and deliver it to the schools of choice, and the personnel within the schools will figure out how to distribute the food to the students who would be enrolled in the program. And therefore, I, as the organizer, do not have an idea who these students are, and hopefully we can also minimize any type of negative attention that these students may receive. I do have a, a question. I'm just curious, how did you get involved in this? You sound so very passionate about it. I was haphazardly, I apologize. That's okay. Um, I was reading a New York Times article on food shaming, and they happened to mention a few programs that were nationally recognized for minimizing food insecurities for children. And Blessings in a Backpack just happened to be one that I looked into and seemed to be a small yet sustainable program. And that's kind of how it just all started. Excellent. And this is your only daughter right here? I have a four-year-old who is in tumbling class right now with my husband, who is my partner in crime. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Anybody like that? No? All right. Thank you very much. Look forward to the update. Excellent. Mr. Mitchell, facilities update. Summer construction projects at the schools. We, we did a uh, review of the facilities work that's being done in the fiscal subcommittee meeting, and if I may just give you a quick overview of where we are. Um, the most important point that I want to stress, and, and I would say the most important goal um, from uh, the school department's point of view is to ensure that school is going to be ready, all of our schools are going to be ready to go um, on the date that we have announced will be the, the start of the school year. So. Um, uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy to report that we are on schedule. And it's not just ensuring, as we've discussed before, that the schools are ready for August 30th when teachers report, but we need to give teachers time to get their rooms ready at both Cumberland Hill and 
Garvin because of the exten extensive work that has been done in both of those schools. As of right now, Cumberland Hill is like almost done. As the committee knows, and, and I'm pleased to report to the public, a tremendous amount of work has been done both inside and outside of Cumberland Hill School. And um, in fact, um, uh, much of the cement work that was done to curbing and sidewalks, um, that has been completed. I know that the company doing that work is, I, I don't know if they took the forms off today, but that will be done. And it looks really nice. The interior of Cumberland Hill looks um, really nice as well. All um, of the asbestos abatement work has been done. All of the floors um, have been installed. And the, the custodial staff and maintenance staff now are in a position where they can, in fact, I believe that they have already started waxing those floors, which is really important to the process. The only thing I believe that needs to get done at Cumberland Hill now is they're doing a tremendous amount of work in the cafeteria, and they're just finishing the floor. Walls have been painted, new ceiling tiles have been um, put in, and that's gonna look like a, a whole new room. So Cumberland Hill, um, Teachers are going to be in a position where they can start um, moving back in in a, in a short period of time. Garvin, the, uh, uh, much more work has been done at Garvin, many more rooms. Um, I, I believe the total number of rooms are more than at Cumberland Hill. They are going to be done with putting down the new tile uh, in those um, rooms by, I believe, next Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. Then the custodial and maintenance staffs will get in there and wax those floors, and teachers will be ready to will will be allowed to get in there to start to get their rooms ready as well. The, there are also um, um, fire alarm systems in two schools that are um, going to um, you know have some extensive work done. Both Garvin and North Cumberland Middle Schools are going to have um, updated or new. Uh, fire alarm systems, and that work is going to begin on Monday. I think the most important thing that everyone needs to know about the work on the fire alarms is the fact that at no time will the alarm systems not be in operation. Like, there, there, there has to be a system set up where um, an alarm um, um, can be um, set um, at any time so to alert the, the the fire department, so um, th so they're you know they're they're on on top of that, and, and that of course is really important. So that work begins on Monday. Community school, as you know, we're replacing the boilers there. The boilers have been uh, have been ordered. They're just waiting for those to come in, and the preliminary work required for a job uh, that requires a tremendous amount of time and effort um, has been started. And because you know of the, um, the warm weather at the beginning of the school year, we don't need to be concerned until you know, November, October and November when um, the temperature starts to change. So we're in good shape there. So the bottom line is there's a lot of activity happening in the district regarding facilities and as you all know, uh, as members of the school committee, it requires a tremendous amount of, of coordination and um, th things are, are happening simultaneously. And um, so we're, and, and we're really pleased with the effort of E&E, the, the project manager. So that's a, a quick summary of all the work that's being, and I'm, I know that there are other things that have been done, but that those are, those are the major facilities um, w work that's being done in the district. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. And th the last thing that I wanted to mention, and I, I think it's important um, to reassure the public, there was an article in the Valley Breeze today about enrollment. And one of the things that, you know, I mentioned in the article is that we're in a position as I would say most school systems are from time to time, that we really need to take a, um, a look at how schools are districted because 
for example, we know that enrollment at community school is way up and we're n nearing capacity and we know that there are several, several grade levels that are closed, which means we have no more room um, for students. And the same is true for Ashton. And we actually have some other schools where there are specific um, grade levels that um, have no more room for students who enroll. And as you all know, the, um, when we get students registering, and we'll get them registering right up to the start of the school year and beyond, um, when we have students who enroll and we are at capacity in their um, home school at the grade level that they are registering for, let's just say a fifth grader um, at a community, which is full, then we have no choice but to um, enroll them in another school. And when that happens, the, the, the choice, the closest school to community is Cumberland Hill. So we would put that student in Cumberland Hill. And when we are in a situation where we have to move a student from their home school to another school because of enrollment, we are responsible for transportation. So uh, it doesn't, you know, and, and most parents are very understanding. But getting back to the issue of redistricting, that is not something that's going to be done in September between now and the start of the school year because it's going to require a tremendous amount of, of study and uh, consideration about what we want to do. And there may be several options for us to consider. As you can imagine, that is always a difficult conversation because you know, there are going to probably be, if we decide to redistrict, there are going to be some families whose children are going to a school and they may be, with redistricting, may be reassigned to another school. So um, we don't want people to you know, get nervous about that yet. If we can certainly avoid that, we want students to go to their home school that's the reason why families move into the neighborhoods that they move into many times is because they want their children to attend a specific school. And when we're, we're very sensitive to that. And I think it's important that everyone knows that we do the best that we can to support uh, families uh, in those situations. But they're inevitably, and I, I believe you know most school systems in Rhode Island and in a lot of places, you know, there are going to be times when enrollment exceeds capacity, and we have no choice but to come up with some alternatives. So the most important thing, Mr. Chairman, that I wanted everyone to know is that the, the conversation around redistricting is something that will happen over the course of the next school year. It's not something that's going to happen within the next month. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Excellent. Next item on the agenda is Chairperson's Report, Fiscal Year 2018 Budget Update. I have no new information. Mr. Prigiano, do you have anything you'd like to add for 2018 budget at this time on an update? Anything? Yeah, just head over to the microphone, please. Thank you. As, as far as the as far as the state budget goes, um, I got notification the other day from Ride that um, there won't be any um, reduction in our state aid. The million three hundred eight we put in the budget, they've um, we've received confirmation that's what we'll receive, and they sent out a schedule of how we'll receive it each month because, you know, July went by and so they're, they're making adjustments in how it will be distributed to the districts. But so um, it's too early really to comment anything else on our budget. You know, we're just, we'll, we'll start doing budget reports after the first quarter, then we do a monthly, you know, with July and August there isn't that much activity to report on. And, uh, but the good news is the state budget is going to, the troubles that they had, is it going to result in any reduction of state aid? Excellent. That's great to hear. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is reports of standing committees, payment of bills. Mr. DeMonica. Mr. Chairman, we did meet upstairs tonight, and we have uh, approved vouchers for payment. There's uh, over two years, the 16, 17 year, and the 17, 18 year. So in the 16, 17 year, we approved payments of $803,630.58, and I would move passage on that. It passed upstairs three to zero. Mr. Tamarica has a motion on the floor for the 16, 17 school year. Payment of bills of $803,630.58. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hess. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. 7-0. Thank you. And on the 17-18 year, upstairs on a 3-0 vote, we approved $266,145.66, and I would move passage. Mr. DeMonica has a motion to pass for the 2017-18 school year payment of bills in the amount of $266,145.66. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Denon. All in favor? Ayes have it. 7-0. Next item on the agenda. Don't go anywhere, Mr. DeMonica. Fiscal Management Subcommittee update. All right, so Mr. Chairman, we did talk tonight upstairs. Uh, we got an update on the construction progress as well. Uh, Mr. Pregnano handed out some sheets in regards to the FY 2017 budget projections, and right now we're about 110,000 to the good, give or take, uh, but depends on what happens with the bills that come in for health care as well. And we did talk a little bit about the um, uh, $5 million bond that the town approved uh, in regards to construction work that's going to happen on that as well. Some of that's going to go in front of the new building committee for them to handle. And um, Mr. DeMonica, do we have a date for that meeting? I don't have it. Um, okay. I know Mrs. Shabbats did uh, send something out to members of that committee about when they were going to have a meeting. And then we talked about this re rationale for the 100 book challenge that the um, superintendent and Mr. Pignano has already issued the purchase order for it, and uh, they'll go to the schools, which they uh, appeared in front of achievement. So that's it for fiscal update. Thank you, Mr. DeMonica. Next item on the agenda, policy and procedures subcommittee update. Mr. Fiorillo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, policy and procedures did meet uh, uh, last night. Uh, we had a very full agenda. Uh, one of the discussion items were a new policy that we're looking that we're going to try to create uh, around concussion protocols and also other medical issues which may prevent a student from regularly attending school um, that may affect um, their ability to take part in other er school activities and we're going to try to create a policy that will take into consideration uh, whatever their medical needs are for that period of time. Uh, once we were to actually pass such a policy, it would have a cascading effect probably on other policies and we would have to address that at a later time. We also had a discussion about uh, possibly adding a policy category just for health and safety. We seem to have a lot of different policies surrounding health, safety, health and wellness. Uh, it might behoove us to actually put them all together in one simple place for parents to find uh, we also took up amended policies E3, collection of payment for school meals, and K2, the use of school facilities, uh, which we'll discuss uh, in depth later on in this agenda. And we also discussed and voted on the new K5 appeals policy, um, which will help us out in the future. And we'll discuss that more in depth uh, um, later on the agenda. Yeah, K4 appeals policy? K5. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fiorillo. Next item on the agenda, Achievement and Communication Subcommittee update. Mr. Denon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Achievement and Communication Subcommittee had two meetings since our last regular full meeting. Um, we met in July, uh, the middle of July, to talk about professional development that the district is going to be focusing on this year. Um, the focus will be on educational outcomes 
and they're using research-based uh, practices for that. And um, one important piece is the district is continuing to invest in SLSD, which is uh, self-regulated strategy development. Um, I, I know Mr. Demo if Mr. Demano were here, he would, he would uh, talk about um, the gains that the district is seeing as a result of uh, this investment, and it, it makes sense to keep it going. Um, last night, on August 10th, the subcommittee met and we had one item on the agenda, which was the annual report to the community. Um, if everybody recalls, uh, we typically put an insert into the Valley Breeze. That, that's what we've done the last few years, where there's an update on, um, on what's happening in the district. So we are going to do that again this year. And uh, we should expect to see it sometime in October, um, which there's enough time between now and then to prepare it. Um, it's th the goal is to basically inform the community about what's happening in the district also let uh, residents know about their investment that they're making in the school department, about um, how we're using the, the tax money that they're giving us. And uh, one of the focuses is gonna be on student achievement. So sort of what, what are students uh, doing in, in school and, and how are they progressing and, and what gains are being made? Um, uh, like, like I said, it's gonna be in the Valley Breeze. I'm sure we'll have extra copies available that we can give to the library and, and make available electronically as well. That's it. Excellent. Great update from everyone. I appreciate it. Next item on the agenda, comments from the public. Okay. Hearing none. Next item on the agenda, public hearing, reading of amended policies. Mr. Fiorillo. Yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We did... Um, approve amended policies, K-2 use of school facilities, and E-3 collection of payment of school meals. I would ask that those revised policies be read into the record, as well as the new policy, which will be a first reading, which is K-4, the appeals process. Thank you, Mr. Fiorillo. I would like to open public comment in regards to K-2 use of school facilities, E-3 collection of payment for school meals, and K-4, or and then a reading, first reading for K-4 appeals process. If anyone has any questions or concerns in regards to that, please step up to the microphone. Hearing none, we'll call that closed. Next item on the agenda, new business. Discussion and or vote to rescind teacher non-renewal recommendations. Mrs. Fogel. I don't know, I'll just talk loud. In executive session, uh, we made a recommendation to rescind uh, one teacher um, who is, uh, who's currently still on the non-renewal list based on um, a position that has uh, become available. So we're asking for you to approve that um, recommendation. Pleasure of the committee. I'd like a motion to rescind the one teacher. Uh, Mr. Denon has a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? S I'm sorry, Mr. Denon. I was Denon. just gonna say motion to approve. Okay. Mr. Dennett has a motion to approve the rescinding of the one teacher. Mr. Hess seconded that motion. Mr. Fiorello? I just want to, because it sounds funny, uh, I just want to clarify it's to rescind the teacher's non-renewal, non which means we're bringing the teacher bringing back. Bringing the teacher back, yes, thank you. So we're a vote to rescind the teacher non-renewal non recommendations. We're bringing this teacher back Correct. for Next the fiscal year, yes, exactly. Yeah, for the 27, 28. I, I apologize, I apologize, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank, Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. Next item on the agenda, discussion and a vote to approve the first reading of the new policy K-4 appeals process. Mr. Fiorillo. You know, I always ask this question. I always, always forget what the answer is. Do we need to actually approve? The, we don't really approve the first reading of the policy, do we? Because it, for a new policy, we have to actually have two readings before we vote. No, right? Yeah, so, well, yeah, which we have already done. So I'm just going to move on if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. So we're not having a discussion and or vote? No, because we first. can't really okay. vote until the next reading. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to get this modified with uh, Cindy for the next. 
All right, next item on the agenda, discussion and or vote to approve amended policies, K2 use of school facilities and E3 collection of payment for school meals. Mr. Fiorello. So K2, the use of school facilities, this is a policy that we bring back every year. We make some minor adjustments uh, sometimes. This year we did make some more substantial adjustments uh, at Mr. DeMonica's request because he pointed out a couple of um, points of interest on it. Uh, we took out the information about the rental of the fields that we don't actually control. It was a holdover probably from 20 years ago. Uh, so we've put the contact information for people to be able to uh, get information on those fields over the Parks and Rec Department and also people who want to rent the pool. We've directed them to our pool vendor for them to take care of that. And there was just some very minor uh, language changes like uh, removing Cumberland Fire District or Cumberland Fire Department, things of that nature. And I would make a motion to approve the amended policy K2 use of school facilities. Thank you. Mr. Fiorello has a motion to approve K2 use of school facilities. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Denon and Mr. DeMonica. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Mr. Fiorello, E3, collection of payment for school meals. This is a, uh, a policy that uh, we've been discussing a little bit here and there over the past six months. The idea is to no longer offer the alternative meal, which is now part of the new the, uh, amended policy. Um, we found part of the issue is, you know, trying to find that that spot between providing lunch, a healthy, nutritious lunch to a child, while at the same time we may not be getting paid for that lunch, and w how do we address that situation? And what, in the end, what we decided to do was to no longer hold the children uh, accountable for the balance of their lunches, but really hold their parents accountable for their lunches. So at no time will a child ever be denied a meal in our buildings. However, uh, that meal will be charged to their account, and their parents will be expected to pay for that account, uh, pay, pay off that account. Um, so we will no longer be offering alternative meals and children will no longer be given slips of paper with balances on it. Uh, this will be something that will be dealt with directly to the parents. There is a whole procedure in place in the policy as far as emails and phone calls, everything including, at the very last resort, sending their account to a collection agency to collect that money. Um, but at no time will the children be held accountable for it. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this policy. I think we all are. Uh, Sean Spillane from Sodexo Food could not be here tonight, uh, or last night actually, but she is in agreement with the way that the policy is now written, and I believe it's a great step forward. We will monitor it, of course. We'll also make sure that parents that need some assistance in the form of free and reduced lunch will be um, made aware of those services, helped out, in any way we can to try to expedite that paperwork for them. Because we're not trying to harm anyone. We're still trying to prov provide healthy, nutritious meals to students, whether it's breakfast or lunch. But at the same time, we need to really uh, ensure that we're trying to recoup all that money. So. Okay, Mr. Fiorello. Um, I make a motion to approve, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Mr. Fiorello has a motion to approve. Do I have a second for E3 collection of payment for school meals? Looking for a second. Second by Mr. DeMonica and Mrs. Friedman for discussion. Mr. DeMonica? Yes. Um, is there a way we can amend this that says when we notify the parent uh, that their child is overdue that we automatically get a copy of the free and reduced application? Um, and the second thing is I know in the past the school committee is maybe not this group, but We've adopted a policy that no child is given a cheese sandwich. We give them the regular lunch as everyone else. Um, so they're not stigmatized or put out and, you know, in their peers that, oh, she got the, you didn't get the lunch today because you didn't pay. Is there a way we can put the, on this policy and state it clearly that the Cumberland School Committee provides a 
lunch. We don't provide the cheese sandwiches to stigmatize That is actually child. already in the policy. It specifically we will say that a child will receive a meal. Uh, they would no longer be, children that are in arrears though would not be able to get extra food items like desserts, cookies, things like that, but they will always get a meal. It is actually in the policy. Um, and at the beginning of the school year, they get all the paperwork for free and reduced. And then if they are in, a, in arrears, as part of that process, that is more of a procedural aspect, but they will be um, in any way that we can help them with that process, we will. Chairman, I mean, I understand Monica. what we're trying to do here, because upstairs in fiscal, we, we hear about the amount of money that's owed to us, not only from our own children, the Cumberland Public Schools, but the charter schools as well. But we have a woman here that was here tonight talking about sending home lunch to children or, do, or meals over the weekend because we know they're going home hungry and there won't be meals there. And I mean, what's a cookie? I mean, or a, or a brownie or something that may fill up a, someone's tummy for the rest of the day or even that night in the meal. And if we're going to give them the meal, let's give them the meal and give them the dessert that goes with it, I, in my personal opinion. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we're truly no child, you know, we're for the children. If they're, if they're well fed, they're going to learn in school. You know, if they're hungry, they're hungry. And maybe that snack goes a long way. I mean, the school district makes money off our lunch program. Um, and I know it can be hard at times when we talk to Sedesco about collections, collections, collections. But we also lose money on the charter, don't lose money, but we have a problem collecting from the charter school as well. Those children, this policy doesn't address that whatsoever. And we're the, we're the meal provider. Actually, uh, by ride regulations, all any charter school that uses our service has to uh, um, adhere to our policy. So they will also be adhering to our policy. But they've never made us whole either. And, you know, thousands of dollars. Well, they the policy isn't that they have to make us whole. They have to do the same steps of trying to get recoup the money. So they will actually be doing the same thing. They will be having to send their parents to collections if it comes to that. Their collection agency or our collection agency? Thank you. I, thank you, Mr. DeMonica and Mr. Fiorillo. I do have to agree. If we're going to give the child a meal, now we're opening up a window if they want a cookie or dessert and they get rejected, they could get bullied in a way because of that or made fun of. Mr. Mitchell? The only, certainly, you know, I respect the, the opinion of the members of the, of the school committee. You know, one of the main focus areas of the strategic plan, which you all will be hearing about within the next month or so, um, is health and wellness. I think we have a responsibility to provide a healthy meal to students. I don't know that, uh, and, and of course, I mean, I taught health. So, and, and, uh, and it, you know, and health is still really important to me. I think we have a responsibility to, this is just my personal opinion, uh, a responsibility to provide a healthy meal. I don't know that we have a responsibility to provide snacks, which would may include, or dessert, which may include things like cookies and and um, unhealthy things. So I, I'm all for healthy food. I am not for, personally, and I'm just one person, um, for providing um, unhealthy um, foods to, to students. I mean, if it were up to me, I mean, we wouldn't be giving cookies to anybody. I mean, that's just me, but just, something for your consideration. Mr. Mitchell, we take that big box of pretzels out of your office and pass them out. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Against? Against. I'll go against as well. That passes five to seven, four. F five to seven, five, I'm sorry, five to two, for the uh, policy, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm doing the math in my head to make sure I get it right, and you know it's not working out here. All right. Next item on the agenda: personnel recommendations. 
Mrs. Fogel. Hi. All right. So it's August, so I'm going to be up here for a few minutes. So. All right. So I'm going to start with retirements. I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following retirements. Richard Kent, custodian Knights at McCourt Middle School, effective June 30th, 2017, after 20 years of service. And Kathleen Richard, paraprofessional in the classroom at North Cumberland Middle School, effective June 30th, 2017, after 21 years of service. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fogel, go back to those two again, please. So Richard Kent, yep. um, 20 years of service, and Kathleen Richard, 21 years of service. Mr. Kent was a custodian, um, and um, Kathleen was uh, a paraprofessional at North Carmel Middle School. Okay, thank you. So, Mrs. Fogel, I would like to, I'm sorry, Mr. Denon? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Denon. Mr. Denon has a motion to accept the two retirements as presented to us. Do I have a second? Second by Mrs. Goggin. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you, I have Mrs. some Fogel. resignations. I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following resignations. Cheryl Amaral, speech language pathologist at Cumberland Hill Elementary School, effective August 1, 2017. Melissa Custer, elementary special education coordinator, effective August 4th, 2017. Jacob Keeling, APE educator, he was a .7 at North Cumberland Middle School, effective August 7th of 2017. And Raymond Savickas, secondary chemistry teacher at Cumberland High School, effective June 30th of 2017. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. Pleasure of the committee. Make a motion we accept the uh, resignations. Mr. DeMonica has a motion to accept as spoken by Mrs. Fogel. Mr. Denon has a second. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I have a leave of absence. I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the unpaid leave of absence of Melina Kelly, grade three teacher at Garvin Memorial School for the 2017-2018 school year. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. Pleasure of the committee. A motion we approve the um, leave of absence. Mr. DeMonica has a motion to approve the leave of absence as presented by Mrs. Fogel, a second by Mr. Hess. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. And uh, I have the following appointments. I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following appointments. Curtis Carter, secondary mathematics teacher at North Cumberland Middle School, effective August 29th, 2017. Uh, it's a full-time position. He would be a step three. Stephanie Martineau, special educator in a specialized classroom at BF Norton Elementary School, effective August 29th, 2017. Uh, this is a full-time position. She is a step one. And Christy Robinson, secondary mathematics teacher at North Carmilla Middle School, effective August 29, 2017. This is a full-time position. She's step one. All three of these positions are budgeted. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. A pleasure of the committee. Mr. Hess has a motion to approve the three appointments. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Denon and Mrs. Goggin. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank right. you, Mrs. Fogel. And last, I'm going to go through my coaching appointments because uh, high school sports starts August 21st, so we've got to get them in. So I request the advice and consent on the following coaching appointments at the high school. Joshua Lima, varsity football coach. Derek D'Souza, assistant football coach. Gabrielle Gonzalez, junior varsity football coach. Julia Leonard, assistant junior varsity football coach. Jackie LaPointe. Varsity Field Hockey, Pamela Etheridge, Assistant Field Hockey, Justin Resendez, Boys Soccer, Stephen Gorman, Boys Soccer, David Petrucci, Girls Soccer, John Hoxie, Girls Soccer, Justin Hool, Girls Tennis, Thomas Kenwood, Boys Cross Country, Vanessa Malloy, Girls Cross Country, Rachel Powell, Fall Cheerleading, Ruth Plant, girls volleyball. So right now we have um, the assistant girls tennis coach and the assistant girls volleyball coach that are still vacant at the high school. And you want me to just do the middle school ones too before you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, bring okay. them right in. And so I have the following appointments for the middle school. I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following middle school appointments. Kerry Carpenter, cross country coach, North Carmel Middle School. Christopher Fernandez, 
um, cross country McCourt Middle School, Ron LeClaire, boys soccer coach at uh, North, Brent uh, Scofus, boys soccer coach at North, Scott Winslow, boys soccer coach at McCourt, David De Jesus, girls soccer coach at North, and we are currently still seeking a girls soccer coach at McCourt. Matt has several applicants that should be shorn up by the end of this week. Mrs. Fogel, you've had a busy summer. Yes, and next viewing. it'll probably be worse next time. Not for coaching, though. The coaches always take me forever to read, so. No problem. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. Pleasure of the committee. Mr. Denon makes a motion to approve, Gentlemen. as spoken by Mrs. Fogel. Mr. DeMonica. I have the usual question. Are they all uh, licensed and so Certified. forth? Yep. So as of July 1, I'm sorry, January 1st, 2017, Ride No Longer issues um, certifications for both substitutes and coaches. We are still, however, required to comply with uh, the Rhode Island uh, inter Interscholastic Leagues um, you know, uh, first aid, all of that. They have all of their paperwork in. Matt has made sure that everyone already has all their paperwork in and that they're all ready to go. Thank but you. they don't, if they didn't already previously have a certification, they don't, they won't issue a new one. Or if it expired, they don't issue new ones. Ride doesn't do that for subs or coaches anymore. Thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Denon has a motion. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hess. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. Next item on the agenda, school committee comments, school liaison reports. Pleasure of the committee. Go ahead, Mr. Fiorillo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this morning, Mr. Mitchell and I had the pleasure of having a uh, presentation done by students from the Leadership Academy over at the OCYL. It, was a research project that they did centered on start time for students, uh, something that Mr. Mitchell and I have been involved in for the past several months uh, with groups from around the state. Uh, all of their, it was a great presentation by all the students. They did a great job, uh, but it really reaffirms the belief that we need to do this. Uh, we are in the process of the, of, um, we're in the application process for a chapter for a, a, a local chapter of the Start School Laters movement that is uh, going across the country. Uh, some may be aware that the state of California recently passed a state law uh, that high school cannot start before 8.30. Uh, there is a bill in, study, in a study committee in our state house uh, by Representative Casimiro from, uh, I believe, North Kingston. Uh, I believe this is something we need to get done. We need to start really looking at how we're going to do it because the only thing really stopping us is the cost. So we need to figure out that piece of it. Um, and I think that also ties into the discussion that we're going to have regarding redistricting. I think if we're going to redistrict, we should redistrict uh, properly and do it the entire time, both elementary schools and middle schools, to really um, even out the student enrollments across the district. Uh, and that may include some major changes, like moving the preschool uh, to free up more classroom space on that end of town. Um, but we'll have to look at all these options, and I think that we should put do it hand in hand with redistricting and also the start times at the high school and middle schools uh, so we can do it all as one big package. Um, and I will keep you up to date on what happens with the, the chapter that we're starting and we'll be looking for input from the public to be involved in that. Uh, I also, on a personal note, want to wish Melissa Custer well in her new job at in the Woonsocket School System. Um, she has been an invaluable member of the special education team. I've gotten to know Melissa over the last couple of years with her work with special ed students through the L's. Um, I see her frequently, and she's always willing to pitch in, even in things that have nothing to do with special education. If there's a need in the building, she's willing to pitch in and get the job done. She always has a smile on her face and is willing to work with everyone. Uh, she is a talent that will be sorely missed in our district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fiorello. Good update. I would like to mention that uh, principal of JJM, Deborah Malcolm, is hosting on uh, Tuesday, August 29th at 6.30 to 7.30 in the cafeteria. Uh, she's going to share changes that have been made in the arrival and dismissal procedure for students. 
it's always been a point of contention, the drop off and the, uh, the pickup. And I have to say that Principal Deb Malcolm has done a great job uh, tackling uh, these obstacles. She's got it down to science from the end of last year. So I encourage any parents listening that uh, students attend that school, that they attend uh, this forum at the school. So that's all I have. Anyone else? Excellent. Well, enjoy the rest of your summer. Mr. Fiorillo makes a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hess. All in favor? Ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.